afternoon and welcome to today's Way Forward Workshop Leader Lunch Break, where we are pleased to welcome Dr. Kirsten Ellenbogen to the conversation. It's a big week here in Cleveland for the first time since 1806 and the last time until 2099, Ohio will experience a total solar eclipse next Monday. At the heart of the event, you will find Great Lakes Science Center and its visionary leader, Dr. Kirsten Ellenbogen, who months ago set big plans in motion to educate and celebrate this celestial event. Dr. Ellenbogen arrived in Cleveland in 2013, leaving her role at the Science Museum of Minnesota to take the helm as the third president and CEO of our Great Lakes Science Center. She brought with her almost two decades of experience working at five museums and consulting for more than 30. Her vision upon arrival here was to focus on 21st century skills development and grow our young leaders into future innovators, leading that innovation herself. She is both renowned and heralded for her work in advancing STEM education and visioning how museums can impact a community support STEM learning and scientific argumentation, and inform policy. Her publications are numerous and her honors, both local and national, are abundant. A few deserve special mention. She was recognized by the White House Office of Science and Te Technology Policy, selected to be a Noyce Leadership Fellow, co-principal investigator of the Center for Advancement of Informal Science Education, and under her leadership, the Science Center was named a 2021 National Medal, I'm sorry, received, uh, named a finalist for the National Medal for Museum and Library Service, recognizing their pioneering approaches and deep community partnerships during that very difficult year. Locally, she's been recognized as a Cranes Woman of Note, a notable woman in STEM, and my favorite, one of 500 leaders, doers, visionaries, and idea, generation, idea generators who shape the city. And she's going to shape our view of the skies over the weekend. Dr. Ellenbong, and I turn it over to you. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that introduction. Uh, I'm going to leap into the presentation because I suspect I'm going to end up going through some of this pretty quickly so I can get to your questions. We have been answering questions about the 2024 total eclipse since 2017 when we experienced the partial eclipse here in Cleveland. Uh, and we have been planning with NASA Glenn Research Center, Destination Cleveland, and many, many, many other organizations in town and in, across the region ever since 2017 uh, to get us to this weekend and Monday. So let me start my presentation. Uh, and I want to make sure that everybody can see the right view. So if somebody can give me a thumbs up. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. So I wanted to start briefly, and Marianne did such a great introduction. Um, perhaps I don't have to say much, but but I wanted to make sure, you know, we are one of the youngest museums in town. And uh, I, I'm not sure that everyone is aware of everything we do Many, many people know our exhibits, but our programs are comprehensive. Um, and the recognition that we've received uh, really focuses on the deep partnerships we have in the community. Um, the students that we work with on a regular basis, both in school programs and in after school programs, those students go on to terrific things. Those students receive national recognition. We have so many amazing students in Cleveland, and we are undertaking some really big transformations. Some of you may remember this space, uh, which was a tiered space right as you walked into our main galleries, uh, this NASA Challenger activity. Uh, it has been completely transformed. There's now a floor there. And on the ground level is our new robotics lab. And we just cut the ribbon last month on our new Cleveland Creates Gallery. So if you have not seen us lately, you have not seen us. So I do invite you to come by and see that. We've got a lot more new exhibits coming um, and it's just an exciting time of transformation. But you're here to talk about the eclipse. Now, the basics, right? I hope you all know this. The eclipse itself is on April 8th. 
Uh, totality starts at 1.59 p.m. I'm sorry, the eclipse starts at 1.59 p.m. We reach totality right at 3.13 in Cleveland, and then totality ends at 3.17, and the eclipse ends at just before 4.30, 4.28. Um, those times are important, and if you're not right in Cleveland, I strongly recommend you get one of the many apps or go on a website, start with the American Astro Astronomical Society, AAS.org. You'll be linked to well-vetted sites from there where you can find out exactly when totality is uh, in your community. Now, you may be looking at this eclipse stuff and say like, okay, why is this so rare? Haven't I seen eclipses before? You probably have seen eclipses before and they're partial eclipses, right? Due to the way that the sun, the earth and the moon are interacting in orbit, we get eclipses around the earth on a regular basis, multiple times a year. The chances uh, of that eclipse being in that path of totality and seeing that from land, seeing that in a populated area, uh, having that happen at the right time. I mean, the chances of being in just the right spot to experience totality, that's what's extremely rare. That's why last time Cleveland has seen this is 1806. And I know 2099 is the next time we're going to get that coming through a little piece of Ohio and, and in the lower 48 states. But 2444 is the next time we'll see one in Cleveland. So rare is an understatement. Um, and I can dive a lot in if you're interested in the science of how it happens. I'm happy to go back to some of that um, because it is fascinating. But when you're looking, you really do want to make sure um, you are in that path of totality. Our friends in Columbus uh, at COSI are in fact coming up to us here in Cleveland. They're at 99% and they know 99% is nothing like totality. We get a lot of questions about the center line, how important it is to be on the center line. Here's what happens the closer you get to that center line. You get a little more time with totality. So for an eclipse chaser, that's really exciting. If this is their third, fourth, fifth, and they wanna maximize that time, the difference between being at Great Lakes Science Center for the eclipse, where we'll get three minutes and 53 seconds of totality and being in Avon Lake, where you're going to get just a couple more seconds of totality, that makes a difference to them. So they're going to go right to Avon Lake for that. For most of us, we are thrilled with almost four minutes of totality right here in Cleveland. It's extraordinary. We're also, we get so many questions about uh, weather and, you know, what we should expect. The good news is we're so close, we're going to find out soon. Um, and I can tell you one of the reasons we're especially well positioned to celebrate the eclipse right here on the lakefront in Cleveland is because we do get a lake effect. Now, you're familiar with the lake effect that relates to snow and where that pattern is falling. But there is another lake effect um, that has to do with the dispersal of clouds over huge bodies of water. And you may not think about this every day, but we're on a Great Lake. And at Great Lake Science Center, we are literally, I could throw something out my window right now and easily be in Lake Erie. So we are right on the lake shore and that changes the cloud cover. So you can see here on this um, NOAA projection. And again, this is just talking about statistical patterns, but you can see viewability on this map with data from Cleveland Burke Lakefront Airport is 56.4%. Now compare that, right? You see that viewability there, the 56.4%. Compare that to data and on the map, it shows up as Cleveland, Ohio. But if you're looking at it, you'll see that's from this data is from uh, Hopkins Airport, just miles away at Hopkins Airport, viewability is 38.9%. So we really do get a big effect from the lake. And don't presume in Ohio, I know we can be a bit of an Eeyore on our weather here, but let me tell you, we have a lot better. And in fact, the projections have ended up being very active, um, but we are, we are, really in a good position 
to actually have better viewability than many areas in Texas. So I pulled up viewability for Dallas, and you can see here that their viewability is not as good as what we're projected to have here on the lakefront. Um, so if you are looking here, this is the Dallas slide. This is the Cleveland Hopkins slide. And here we are back at Burke Lakefront Airport. So we're very excited. Frankly, uh, position alone puts us in an extraordinary opportunity to once again be a terrific gathering spot for the eclipse. So um, you have hopefully heard about the Total Eclipse Fest. This festival runs uh, the 6th, 7th, and 8th. So that's Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And it is Great Lakes Science Center gathering the whole community. Um, we have everybody from Cleveland International Film Festival, the City Club of Cleveland, the Cleveland Orchestra, and of course, our daily partner in STEM education and engagement, NASA Glenn Research Center will be running an extraordinary NASA village. This is an image here of what you can expect to see if you come on the 8th. We've got this set up for the 6th and the 7th as well, but there will be a huge area dedicated to going around. If you've ever been to an art fair, well, this is a science fair. And as you go through, you might be interacting with a scientist from Cleveland State or an engineer from Moen. Uh, you might be playing with the big machines that Ohio Cat has brought in. If you've got young children, they'll be running through a terrific early childhood space uh, that we've put together with PNC. All of these different partners are coming together to bring activities to you. So as you go through it, it will feel like a festival. Um, we've got the exhibitor areas. We've got some VIP observation spots. There'll be amazing food trucks. Um, we've got places for everybody to spread out and have fun. And really at the heart of this, you know, I talked about some of these organizations, but we're really thrilled that so many have come together to do this. And in particular, we're delighted that we're really able to champion the arts here. So we will also be having this amazing, the Kulas Solar Stage, where you will see all of these wonderful performances. The Cleveland Orchestra is performing on Sunday on that solar stage. We also have the Kulas Lunar Stage, Caramu House, Tailspinner Theater, Refresh Collective, Cleveland Public Theater, all of them will be performing throughout the weekend in addition to these two free screenings from the film festival and our forums. We've got Dr. Aaron McDonald, advisor to Star Trek coming in with us. NASA Village is really the heart and soul of what we're doing, and we are the only NASA center in the path of totality, right? Look across that path and you will see it does not hit any of the other NASA research centers or visitor centers. So NASA is really gathering here in Cleveland. We'll be hosting quite a few dignitaries engineers, scientists, astronauts who have come in from NASA headquarters, who have come in from Texas and Florida. They are all gathering in this NASA village. There'll be a wide range of exhibits. You will be walking through and interacting with NASA scientists, engineers, astronauts, really the people who are taking us back to the moon and onto Mars. It's going to be a terrific gathering. Now, I wanna make sure we've got time for questions. Um, I, I've been answering a lot, and if I don't know the answer, I can follow up with you. So let me turn it back over to do our Great. questions. Great, Chris Kirsten, thank you so much. Let's start with talking about the crowd. So there's so much that is coming, gonna be happening. Um, what are the plans regarding crowd control and managing the influx of people? So, you know, if you live outside of Cleveland, you may be in a, uh, county where there's been a lot of alarm um, in talking about this. And the exciting thing for us in the greater Cleveland area and in Cleveland in particular is that we are well-practiced at this. 
we have gotten through the RNC very effectively. We have gotten through our Cavaliers parade very effectively. Uh, you know, all of these big things, the, the NFL draft here. So if you have been to a Browns game, for example, and you're coming downtown, expect that the traffic patterns, the roads being closed off, the way police are directing you, that will feel very similar to a Browns game. When you look at those maps and line them up, you can see that's a very similar approach. What will feel different is that there will be more um, control and monitoring of what's happening on a broader set of roads around the city. So looking at what's happening on the highways, there'll be um, work put in place to make sure that there are not people stopping on the side of the road to observe the eclipse. And if need be, some of those main arteries will be shut down to keep traffic controlled. Um, what we've seen from the 2017 eclipse from the areas that experienced totality is that getting in, people come in at different times to get to that perfect viewing spot, participate in the big festivals. It's the leaving that is really tough. So please make a plan for departing. We've scheduled one of the Cleveland International Film Festival films for 5 p.m. on Monday. So you can settle in with the free ticket to see a film after the eclipse, avoid some of the crowds that way. Of course, then you've got the game going. So some people are just going to be walking up ninth to get to the Cleveland Guardians game. Many of us are going to be hopping on uh, public transportation. So RTA has opened up the waterfront line for the entire weekend. So I'll be riding that certainly all weekend. Um, there are a lot of different options. Plenty of people are making reservations to eat downtown, spend time here and wait till the crowd dissipates a bit. So you've got a lot of options to take advantage and make sure that you won't be on the road the whole time. So looking at the festivities plan for the whole weekend, are there different events every day? Are there any costs associated? What does that look like? We are so grateful. We have so, so many sponsors who have come together to make the Total Eclipse Fest completely free. So uh, there are really no expenses beyond what you want to buy for food. Um, and in fact, we've even had a sponsor come forward and make the Science Center itself free for Sunday. So Sunday, when we're going to have the Cleveland Orchestra performing indoors, the entire museum is free that day. If you want to explore our exhibits and activities on Saturday or Monday, that will be the usual admission price. We haven't changed that for the special activities. Um, but the festival itself, which covers the entire grounds, as you saw, not just all of the acres that we're on here on the lakefront, but also the streets surrounding us will be taken over by the festival. All of that is free to the public. What will the experience be like if it does turn out to be a cloudy day here? Assuming it'll still get dark, but we just won't be able to see the actual eclipse? Yeah, so such a good question. Couple things to keep in mind. It's Cleveland. So <laughs> if you don't like the weather, wait a minute and it'll change. Um, there are things that happen around a total eclipse. And as you see that partial eclipse begin and take us into totality eventually, you may start to notice that clouds are dissipating. And that is a known phenomenon that happens. So if you're in an area where the sun is coming in and out of clouds as you're preparing for the eclipse, don't worry, you may find that dissipation happens and gives you a much nicer view. That said, totality itself, right? So the clouds get in the way of seeing um, that crescent form and really starting to see us progress towards totality. Uh, what you'll miss most is that partial eclipse evolving. What you won't miss if there are clouds is totality. Now, again, if there's a cloud covering the sun, you won't be able to you know, have that moment of actually viewing totality. There's so many other things that you'll experience though. You will see around you, particularly if you're able to be in a spot with a big horizon like we have here on the lakefront, you will see this phenomena that looks like almost multiple sunsets happening around you. Um, you will see that whether it's cloudy or not. You will have the darkening happen. You will have um, the temperature will go down by as much as 10 degrees uh, around you. You will see and experience animals starting to behave differently. 
all of those things, sometimes a slight wind picks up during totality. There's lots of phenomena. So be in the moment if a cloud comes in at the last minute and is covering your view doing, during totality, take heart. There's going to be so much to experience in that moment and you're going to love it. Will NASA be sponsoring any activities at the Glenn Research Center? No, uh, there will not be any activities at the Glenn Research Center. If you if you may have experienced, they really focus their activities. We are their public arm. We're their public engagement. There are occasionally public tours there, um, but on a day-to-day -day basis, and certainly for the eclipse, all of that is happening right here at Great Lakes Science Center. And what is exciting you the most regarding this opportunity for the Science Center, NASA, and science education? You know, we work with NASA Glenn Research Center almost every day. There are constant partners. What's special about this is it's really allowed us to come together and gather so many other partners with us. It is unusual to see the full Cleveland Orchestra perform at Great Lakes Science Center. It's unusual to be able to walk out of our doors and see Caramu House doing a performance out front. Um, the coming together of the community for this. And I should say, we've had two large programs, one regional, one national, where we've also been training other groups around the region. So we feel so connected during the eclipse with the many people who will be here for totality and here through the weekend, but we also feel connected um, to a lot of these after school groups that we've been training on data collecting during the eclipse. We feel connected to all of our STEM ambassadors that we've been training around the region at churches, at um, resident homes, at so many different neighborhood and community groups. Um, that feeling of connection around the eclipse and this event, very, very special. You mentioned a bit around the science of the eclipse. Can you talk a little bit more about that and what we might sh and should be looking for? Oh, sure. So, well, the science behind the eclipse is really about um, that perfect lineup of our orbits, um, the tilts of these three, you know, the tilt of the moon uh, as creating that total eclipse, as well as um, just being in the perfect spot on Earth. So, but part of your question was really more about what we'll experience during totality. Is that right? So, and I'd highly recommend um, if you haven't spent some time looking around at apps, um, there are some great ones that can guide you through that. Uh, one, for example, is called Eclipse Soundscapes. Um, and there's another that's simply called uh, the Eclipse app. Uh, it, there's a whole range of them and they can really pinpoint exactly where you're going to be and what phenomena you might see in that exact spot. So you might see something during totality or just as we're coming into and or out of, depending on where you're standing, uh, a phenomena called Bailey's beads. Um, you might also experience something called the diamond and in Cleveland, we're projected to be able to get a double diamond, which is a very rare thing. All of those things are really going to depend on exactly where you're viewing the eclipse from. So again, if you go to aas.org, the American Astronomical Society, that's a good spot to really find out like what phenomena am I going to be able to see in my location exactly? Um, and there are some great apps out there for that as well. So for those who might still be in need, how could they access glasses for the eclipse? And can you also talk about why the need for them? So um, I think we all value our eyes greatly uh, and it is very easy to damage um, the back of your eye uh, by looking at the sun during that partial eclipse evolution or at the wrong moment when you think totality has happened and it isn't quite there yet. So in order to avoid any sort of damage to your eye and frankly, any sort of damage um, to camera equipment, phones, those sorts of things that you might be using, you wanna make sure you have the proper filter. 
So um, most people spend a lot of time talking about uh, the solar eclipse glasses. Of course, we always have ours right around here. And when you put one on, one of the ways to make sure you've got a good set of glasses is you should be able to see, like right now I'm looking out into the, you know, we have some sun here on the lakefront. I'm looking at a bright computer screen. I can't see a single thing, right? I'm. You can hold it up, um, put a flashlight right in front of them. You will see um, if you have no scratches, no damage on it, that you won't be able to see anything. And of course, you're looking on those glasses for those magic numbers, that ISO uh, 12312 2. So again, if you go to aas.org and you want to buy a bunch of them um, via mail, although at this point getting those might be risky. So my best advice to you is to look at your partners like Great Lakes Science Center, um, swing by our you know, store if you're doing this before Saturday. And if you wait till Saturday, you we will have tens of thousands of free eclipse classes we're giving away Saturday, Sunday, and Monday at the Total Eclipse Festival. Um, many sites like that, if you go to our friends up the road at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History, they've got eclipse classes in their store right now. They will be giving some away free on the Total on the Oval event. Um, Many, many of our partners have got them, but you want to make sure you're going with that trusted source. So going to a museum, going to a library, going to one of those vetted sites um, will really put you ahead and, and quell any worry you might have about, am I getting the right thing? So let's look beyond Monday. What is coming up at the Science Center that those of us on the call should be aware of? Well, we're really excited. If you have not experienced the new Cleveland Creates Gallery that we just opened last month, it is extraordinary. It's a celebration of the innovation, the workforce, the people of this region um, that make us so strong. You will see wonderful organizations represented. You'll dive into big data. You will be able to dive into artificial intelligence, remote robotics. Um, there's such a wide range of experiences in there. You will have a great time. So I strongly encourage you to come down and check that out. If you um, are looking for something to do this summer, we will also be celebrating the anniversary of the NASA logo, right? We call it the meatball, but that globe with NASA on it. That was created right here at NASA Glen. And so there's a big celebration coming up on July 15th. It will be free to the public that day. So two things to look for coming up. Um, and there's long lists. If you take a look at greatscience.com, you'll always be able to keep an eye on what's coming up next. Kirsten, this is amazing. We are so fortunate in Cleveland to be in the path of totality, to have the Great Lakes Science Center there, but most importantly, to have you showing us how we should really celebrate and absorb all that's going to be happening this weekend. So thank you for creating so much in terms of education and celebration. We're very, very grateful.